When you get a standing ovation before you start, that means you can get out quick. Uh, to uh, to, to uh, Brother Lee Hill and uh, Dr. Lee Hill and to uh, Ms. Nicholson and to the steering committee uh, of the, uh, the uh, Black Hill Site. I'm trying to make sure this is. Can you hear me okay? I have trouble uh, hearing both of you. Thank you so very much for the very kind introduction, and I'm really honored to be a part of this uh, premier gathering uh, here at the University of Akron. Uh, as I've moved around, I've run into a number of people who says, oh good, we're glad you came back. I said, well, you didn't invite me back. I've been gone. I haven't been in over 15 years, so whatever I said the last time must not have been very uh, hospitable since it took you this long to invite me back again. Uh, so whatever I said then, it would be worse now. So, uh, because, because I've gotten older and more jaded in the process. Thank you so very much. I'm no stranger to the state of Ohio, even though uh, my roots are initially in Florida by way of Wisconsin. Hill, University of Michigan, the neighboring state. So we are more affiliated with Go Blue than with Red, White, Columbus, uh, the Ohio State. And so we won't get into that controversy at this point. But the point of it is, ain't none of them out of universities anyway. So the bottom line is just the plantation that we've been to work on. To the chase. Uh, many of you know that I have a long, uh, deeply uh, and embedded uh, Baptist black church background yes, sir. that doesn't move very much in terms of clocks. Uh, it moves more in terms of the spirit. And uh, however, in order for us, for us to get in and get out on time, I've got to put the spirit on hold and try to watch the clock. And so I'm going to try to stay focused if I can, to try to make my comments and stay limited uh, within the time frame that I uh, have been given. This is an outstanding gathering. Uh, I think that it certainly is the, hopefully, from the looks of this, it will be the, uh, 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 the next generation of the black male think tank at the University of Cincinnati. The went into uh, a retreat, uh, certainly we've been needing something like that in the state of Ohio and in the country, and there's no better place than the University of Akron. So let's hope that this will be the dawning of the rebirth of the black man's think tank, which is such an outstanding kind of gathering down at the University of Cincinnati. Uh, let me begin very quickly. I want to talk about, from the top, the Obama factor in reclaiming black manhood. I want to be very clear that this is not a campaign speech for Barack Obama. What it is, is that it is important that we contextualize who Barack Obama is and what he represents in terms of the re-evolution and the re-establishment of black manhood in America. We must see him not as a messianic figure that emerged out of the sky, but see him as the product, contrary to the press that would have him be otherwise, who somehow has emerged out of the evolutionary process of the redevelopment of black manhood in America. We must understand that black manhood was devastated by 400 years of the most insidious and strategic effort to destroy manhood in the African community. We must understand that it was not that we were deficient because we did not come to America as slaves, but we were made into slaves by a systematic effort to undermine our manhood. The way that that was done was through a strategic process of psychological enslavement. And our current condition 
of our prophetic economic, political, social, and psychological state is a consequence of that deliberate process of destroying our manhood. The essential way that manhood has, was taught on the African continent is that there was a recognition that manhood was in fact the primary role responsibility of those people who were born as males. And it was not enough to chance there was a systematic rite of passage by which boys were taught how to be men and women, girls were taught how to be women. And they were both initiated into an understanding of what their primary role responsibilities were. The primary role responsibility of a black man was to be, for the, for the perpetuation of life and humanity, and that's what was taught. And so the protection of the nest, the protection of those who further and perpetuated the life of the village, was in fact what manhood was all about. Men were instructed that the essence of being a man was to be a father of life. Fathers of life protected and secured the life of the tribe. The devastating loss of black manhood was not so much the individual pain and personal humiliation but it was the rendering of African men as vulnerable and helpless. The fact that we lost our capacity to be able to protect our women and our children and to protect African life. The loss of the capacity to protect Af African life led to a degeneration in our psychology and in our practice in terms of what it meant to be man and that denigration, that self-destruction, and that social, psychological, and spiritual incapacity accounts for the black on black homicide, the black on black destruction, the rejection of black families, the rejection of the role of black familyhood, and all of the other kinds of issues that we see as being symptomatic of this process that was instituted. Even though slavery was, in fact, legally removed over 150 years ago, we are still dealing with the devastation of the enslavement process. The rituals of manhood taught three fundamental principles. One was consciousness, the second was courage, the third was competence. In order to be a man, you had to be conscious know who you are, you had to be courageous, know why you were here, and why you were here was to confront any threats to the life of the tribe. And to be competent was to develop skills that were necessary to service and develop the community. That's what was taught in these initiation ceremonies. Consciousness, courage, and competence. Now, the evolution of our restoration has been the process of restoring this systematic process of putting back in place what the slavery system took out of place. 